result last night, uh, but you know it's a different ball game in the cup, uh, an opportunity to progress to the semi-finals. But you play away this time around. Yeah, exactly. Let's not think about the past. Let's look at the future. Move on from the Sundowns game. Obviously, the focus now turns to to this game against Richards Bay. Our target and our objectives right at the beginning of the season was obviously in the league to to again try and finish in the top four. Um, we would love to try and bring a trophy back to Cape Town City. It's been quite a while now that we haven't uh, held up a trophy. So that target was set right at the beginning of the season. So we find ourselves now in the quarterfinals and this match is a very, very important match for us in order to achieve that 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 objective. Uh, Richards Bay going to be a difficult team. Uh, Trutt is a, a good coach. Makes it difficult when you play against them. Very aggressive team. A team that likes to play on the counter attack. So we're going to have to be at our best. I made a lot of changes, obviously, in the game against Sundowns. Um, just to show how serious we're taking this competition. Um, so yeah, we've got to go out there with all guns blazing and we need to try and redeem ourselves after the, the loss against Sunnams. Thank you, Coach. Let's take questions from the floor. Just by show of hands, I'll take the first one. Questions for Coach Tinkler. Perfect, I can go. Uh, let's go to Jabulo. Uh, Jabulo from US24. Uh, coach, I mean, you were there when this club started, uh, started with a bang uh, in terms of the fanfare, winning over fans and the football that they played. But it feels that the past two seasons um, has been a bit, don't want to use stagnant, but like on a um, somewhat steady um, pace. Uh, not necessarily returning where it was, but not also being there. How do you take this club back to where it was and to a point where it was mentioned among the most exciting and also successful teams in the Yeah, I think obviously that first season we finished third in the league, we won the Telco. Since then, uh, we, we lost in the MTN8 final since I've been back, but we finished second, fourth and fifth. So in terms of the league, I think we've performed quite well. Where we've let ourselves down has obviously been in the cup competitions. So it's about us looking to take those cup competitions a lot more serious. And, and that's been the target and the objective this season. Uh, speaking with the players, giving them the right mindset to make them aware that, you know, at Cape Town City, we want to achieve things, we want to win things. A lot of players have had possibilities to, to better their careers coming through Cape Town City, uh, which has been good for the club and has obviously also been very, very good for the, for the players. But we're more ambitious than that. It's not only about giving players opportunities, it's also about the club achieving success. So we've made the players aware of that situation and hence the fact I've explained you know, the importance of us this season looking to try and lift the trophy. So the first first objective is have to you have to try and get yourself into that final to give yourself a chance, you know, and we gave ourselves a, a good chance by, by obviously beating Royal AM. And now we come up against Richards Bay and we're gonna have to do exactly the same to ensure that we get into the into the next round. So I wouldn't agree exactly that we are stagnant. I think we're a club that is progressive. We're a club that looks to give young players opportunity and I think we've been pretty successful on that front. So I don't think we're a stagnant club. All right, uh, John T. Mark. John T. Mark, Hi, Coach. Um, you mentioned that you made changes for the Sundowns game um, with this in mind, this cup game in mind. Um, how do you balance the sort of situation where you lose a bit of momentum, maybe by losing to Sundowns, then maybe we could have lost anyway. Sundowns, but how do you balance like the possible loss of momentum with wanting to rest players and build your strongest possible team on Saturday? Yeah, you got to understand that you know we plan ahead, and obviously 
three days prior to the Sundowns game, we had the Magezi game. And for me, the Magezi game was the three points that we needed to collect. Um, to be able to compete at the highest level, it's not about beating Sundowns. It's about beating the Magezis, the Royal Ames, the Richards Bay, etc., etc. You know, so my planning and everything that I do, I go according to that. You know, now just because of a result, why should it change my planning? So that's my logic. So I stick to my logic. I stick to my protocols. I believe in what I do, and I believe the squad that I put out last night would be able to compete. But on the night, we we were beaten by a better team. So as simple as that. You know, so. You know, we're, gonna, we're not going to dwell on that, we're going to move on. But we know that we rested a number of players leading up to this game, so we'll go into that game with a lot of fresh, fresh legs and, and players obviously highly motivated to redeem themselves. Thank you, Coach. Let's go. And then any other hands? Okay. Uh, yeah, Mazzola can go first, and then Lorenz will follow. Coach? Um, as well, from SABC Sport, uh, what sort of a uh, game do you expect against uh, Richard Bay? I mean, they not also been doing so well, but Brendan has also made it clear that they are targeting this trophy, so you can expect that they will probably also have arguably their strongest side on the pitch. No, exactly. I think obviously they, their striker is suspended, so that's the one thing we do know. But as I said before, Brendan is a coach that plays with a lot of intensity, a lot of aggression. So we've got to match them in terms of that. Um, having watching them of late, they're a, very much a counter-attacking team, pretty similar to Magezi. Um, so we need to fix the issues that we had against Magezi to ensure we get a positive result against uh, Richards Bay, you know? But I believe in the squad that we have. I believe the boys can go out there and, and put on a performance that, that, that can get us over the line. Lorenz? Uh, coach, uh, it's Robert Duski Times. Um, just a player like Hashim Domingo that you brought into the club. Uh, uh, I'm from Cape Town, so we know the history of where he's come from and how highly regarded he was as a, as a teenager and stuff. He's, he's forever been promising now. You know what I mean? How do you get the best out of him? Because we all know his talent. Like a player like him should be giving goals and assist double digits. How do you get the best out of him at Pusati? I think continue believing in him. You know, an example that I can give you is Mark van Heerden when I signed him. Mark van Heerden came in and I gave a lot of belief in him and within the space of two, three months, he came to me and he said to me, coach, you've given me the love of football back. Maybe that's what he's lacking, is the love of football. You know, but I, I see improvements from Hashim day on day. He knows where his weaknesses are. Like you said, he's finishing. I think that's one, one part of his game that he needs to, to improve on. We know what he's capable of in small spaces, tight spaces. We know that he can play that killer pass, but can he also score goals, you know. Any player that wants to make it at the highest level, especially when you're an offensive player, it's not only about assists, it's also about goals. You know, and, and that's one side of his game that is, is lacking, but I think he needs to, to love the game again. And uh, I'm slowly starting to see that because he's getting a lot of support from me and obviously his teammates. Coach, let's take maybe the last round of questions. Noted Carabo, if you can get the mic to him. Carabo is here. First row. Good afternoon, coach. Uh, coach, how, how frustrating is it, you know, to to want to win trophies, but you know, season in, season out, you know, quality players are being sold. Is that, you know, a conversation that you have with the chairman that all right, I understand trying to keep the club afloat, but how frustrating is it that you have that conversation with him that maybe keep this one for the season and sell him the next because I want to win something with the club? And I think it's about keeping the club afloat. <laughs> like I said, we, we're a club that's very, very ambitious, but we're a club that also never stand in the way of someone wanting to better their future. And obviously, 
players that have moved on have, have gone on to better things and obviously the club has, has profited from that. But that, that, that's a part of the club policy and, and will always be that. I think that will never change, you know. So the, the harsh reality for me as the coach or whoever may come after me, I don't think that will change, you know. So every season, if, we, if we're fortunate, as long as we're having good seasons and players are having good or putting on good performances, they're going to get opportunities to, to move on. Now it's about our scouting, replacing, and making sure that those players uh, match the qualities of, of what you've just sold and what you're bringing in um, fits the model uh, that you play, you know. And yeah, for me as a coach, it's, sometimes it's a bit difficult because you need time. But in this sport, we know there's no time, you know. So that's just the harsh reality. But I've I've grown to live with it and understand it. And you know, I'm happy to see when players move on because it means you know I've helped them grow as a as a player and, and better their future. So you know. I don't think that should change. Thank you, Coach. Are there any takers for the last two questions?